So let's start adding the service. So first, inside the Cosmos service, what we are going to do is we are going to add all of the Cosmos DB calls, all the current calls that we are going to have for our user. So let's see what we have named it in here. So for the user Cosmos service, here we have it like this. So let's call it as user user cosmos service dot cs okay and let's add this code we can just copy it like this okay and let's add it here We have named it as a user cosmos service so let's collect this one thing and let's see this is for the refer me back in the api okay let's see what are the changes here okay the namespace is going to be like this and all of the dependencies are going to be up there And let's see. Okay, so let's first import these packages. So to use the Cosmos DB, we have to actually add the Cosmos DB. And let's see. Let's add here. Azure.cosmos so myself.azure.cosmos so we are going to install this package here except okay let's head back here and here we are importing our models from some other package so not package but something here the path is actually a little bit different because I have done it like this. So we'll sort the, this part out also later. And let's see. So we don't require this namespace. And let's fix the indenting. Okay, let's see what are the things we have here. Users, user Cosmos service. And see, here we have an interface, I use the Cosmos DB service. So these are the functions that we are going to use, like we have to implement. So there's a get user call, get user async call. So this will actually have the ability to actually get the data of a single user. So we just have to pass the user ID. So just a bit different user ID. Camel casing. So create user is going to use the user object that we have and it's going to create it. And the update user, it's going to update the details of the user. And delete user is going to delete the user. We so in this case we have to just pass the ID and authenticate user async so this is the part we are going to implement later on so let's for now comment this out okay and let's introduce this user cosmos db service and what is this constructor is doing and what are the things that we are going to have here okay so public class user cosmos service okay so this is a bit wrong now we have it correct
So let's import this container. So we are going to use the Cosmos container. Okay. Let's see. So this constructor, what is this uh, error? Must have a return time. Hmm. Why is it doing it like this? Hmm. Oh, okay. So we are we require that. Okay, so my bad. So we require this user cosmos service class. So inside this, all of this is actually going to happen. So that's why because this is a user cosmos service, and inside this there is a user the cosmos db service. So these both classes are different. So we'll see where we are actually going to use that in this. Okay. So another thing, let's see. Must have a return type. Okay. okay, so this is actually asking for. Okay, so this constructor have three fields. A cosmos db client and this cosmos db client is actually going to be the actual like api caller using this we are going to get all of the calls like uh, get container so what this means let's say for example so database name and container name so in the cosmos db our database name we require for uniquely identifying the database and which specific container and by container it means table so we have two tables here a user table and a job post table so this container name is actually going to like identify which are we asking for so we are asking for the container or slash table for in this case our user so this two fields is going to have that so our database name is going to be refer me db or something we haven't created that yet but it's going to be something like that our database name and inside that our container name so this is going to fetch all the functions that we have for that and by function i mean let's say for example uh, let me comment this part out for now so let's say we have a delete user so we are going to have a user id here and using this user id our container actually contains a function inside that delete item async and by item it means the user item so it requires a user id so let's say we have a row which has a user id in that so it will find the specific user id and delete that so this is what this line is doing and here for updating it's the same so for updation there could be multiple fields that we can update so that's why we are going to pass in a user object and this container has this function for updating it so we are going to pass the user object and with that this user object is going to have a specific user id so it's going to use that to actually see the id field that we had it's going to use that 
and it's going to update all of the fields it's going to like match it and depending on the changes it's going to update the field for getting all user info so this function is going to use get all of the users so in this case we have created a query so we want all of the items of the table select everything from users table so this is going to get used for that and uh, why we have specifically used why we know that we have this users so we can also uh, create a constant instead of this let's call it as a constraint let's call it as a user container name It was like this only. Mm. Okay. So now it's going to be able to use the container name. And why I have created this constant is because, like, maybe let's say in the future, um, there could be some other functions. Let's say you want to only get a specific row or sorry, a specific column details from the table so there could be multiple constants so you have to like go everywhere and change the user's table name or something so like that kind of problem can occur so that's why i've created a simple variable and like just changing this variable value it will be changing everything so that's why it's like a good practice to have this and this is going to fetch all of the users that we have and then it's going to create a list out of it and this is going to like append that list and give back the result and here you can see the return type is the enumerable per user so it's going to give back a list and let let's say some exception occurs so we have also this to catch that and let's say maybe in the future we can add a azure what was it called mm. there's a azure service which contains all of the logs so we can do logging in this also so this is for getting out of the user and this field if you go here we have the user id so now it like it's self explanatory it will get a user whichever user id that we pass so this is going to get that and again exception handling and finally for creating the user we have this create item async so all it needs is a user object and it will create that so with this we have done our user cosmos service that we have added and uh, that's it for this part